Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Ed's Attention to Detail. Today, I wanted to go over the procedures or the process of changing a tire. Now, this process is going to apply to just about every vehicle out there. There will be some minor differences, but um, all the major points are going to remain the same when you're trying to change a tire. Now, another thing to keep in mind is I am doing this here in my driveway. I'm not doing it out on the side of the road. So, I was actually able to prepare a little bit and get a couple of things together. Now, if you're trying to do this out on the side of a highway, the best thing that I can suggest is make sure that you find a place and get off of the road. Make sure that it's flat. Well, not the tire, but the surface that the car is on the vehicle. Um, and also make sure that it is a solid surface. Don't pull off into the grass or something like that and try to jack your vehicle because the jack might actually sink into the soil. And now you got a vehicle with a flat tire and your jack is buried in the ground too. So anyway, just a couple of things to remember. Always stay safe. If you're in a place to where you cannot do this safely, don't do it. Your life is certainly not worth trying to get a tire changed, okay? AAA, uh, state police, uh, whoever, somebody will come along and try and give you a, a hand, some kind of assistance when it comes to doing this on the side of the road. But, like I said, I'm gonna show you the steps in case you feel like you wanna do it yourself that you'll have a, an idea on how it's done. Now, another thing is you can consult your owner's manual and it will usually list the steps required to change a tire. Um, pretty straightforward. It'll show you the jack points for your vehicle. It'll talk about the jack that comes with the vehicle from the manufacturer, how to use it, where to place it, and so on. So that's another good resource to look at if you ever find yourself where you need to change a tire. Now, like I said before, I'm actually doing this out here in my driveway. I've gathered some things together. I'm not gonna use the jack that came with the vehicle. I'm gonna use a floor jack, um, one that I, I keep here and, and I have available and I just find it easier to use. So that's what I'm gonna use today. But the reason why I'm doing this is the tire has a slow leak on it. I'm not sure if I'm gonna find anything. Now I know that it does have a plug in the tire and please don't uh, don't rate me on my tires because they've been on the car for quite some time and they're actually getting pretty close to being worn out so yeah i know that I'm gonna need tires soon but in the meantime i'd like to go ahead and stop this leak on this one tire so i don't keep having to put air in it every three or four days so i'm gonna look at the plug that was installed previously see if it's leaking and if it's not i'm gonna inspect the rest of the tire and see if there's something else in the tire that, that might need a, a repair. And when I get to that point, I'll talk about that a little bit more. So let's get down to business. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I've got here set up. So you'll notice that I have a four-way lug wrench. I have a pad that I'm gonna be kneeling on. I have my floor jack. I have the jack handle. And of course I got a little wrench over here and that's just so that I can get the cap off of the valve stem. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to. Now another thing that I'm going to be using, gloves. If you have disposable gloves or any type of glove, uh, it'll definitely keep you from getting dirty. So, all right. You'll notice that I have the chocks installed already underneath the wheel of the car. Now I did the front wheel. The only reason why I did the front instead of the back is because I've got the emergency brake set on the car and that's gonna hold the back tire, keep it from moving. So I figured the chocks will keep the front tire from moving. So, since I'm jacking the opposite side of the car, now I have two tires on the other side that should not roll. All right, guys. So, one of the first things that you wanna do when you get ready to change a tire, I'll try not to talk when I'm making all this noise. But one of the first things that you want to do is you want to break the lug nuts loose before you jack the car up in the air. Now the reason for doing that is, I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this, but when you get the car or the tire up in the air, it's just going to want to spin with you unless, now like I said, this is a wheel that's got the emergency brake on it, so chances are that this one would not spin, but it's always a good thing to try and break them loose 
don't take them off, just break them loose while you still have the tire on the ground. That way you've got the friction from the weight of the car holding the tire in place and you can actually get some torque on those lug nuts. So find the size that you need, okay, and that one fits right there. Now, the only reason why I like using one of these four-way lug wrenches is because the ones that they give you uh, from the manufacturer, it's usually straight and then it'll bend and come off and there's there's like one handle on it. Now it's sufficient to do what you need to do, but you only have one side that you can get leverage on. The reason why I like a four-way is now I've got two sides that I can get leverage on. It's just a little bit easier for me to break them loose. So let's go ahead and break them loose. Okay, so that's all five of the lug nuts loose, all right? Didn't take them off, don't wanna take them off with the weight of the car sitting on there, just wanna break them loose. Now, next thing you gotta do is you gotta jack the car up in the air. So remember I mentioned the owner's manual. Make sure you know where a suitable jack point is on your vehicle. A lot of the newer vehicles, they're unibody in construction, they don't have a frame, which frames used to be a great place to jack a vehicle from. But because they don't have a frame per se, uh, you can actually damage the body panels if you jack it from the wrong spot. So make sure that you know where you're going to jack it from. And I'm going to look under here and find a suitable place for this floor jack. I won't be able to use the jacking spot that the manufacturer suggests because I'm using a different jack. But I'm going to find a suitable place for the floor jack. We'll get that underneath there and then we'll get the car jacked up. Not sure if you guys can see it, but I got my jack underneath there. The tire is up off the ground. It don't look like it, but it is. So now I want to take the lug nuts off. So let's take a look. And there we go. So the tire comes off. And what I want to do next is I'm going to actually inspect it and see if I can find the reason for this thing leaking. Okay, so I pulled the tire over here into the shade. It's a little warm right now, so yeah. If you have the option of working in the shade, why not? Um, got a screwdriver, and there's a bunch of little rocks that are stuck in the tread, and I'm just gonna pop those rocks out. Now, another thing to look at uh, and this is really kind of unrelated to what I'm doing here, but in the tread of the tire, every tire, you're going to have wear indicators, okay? My wear indicator is right here. I'm not sure if you can see that real well, but it's a raised spot of rubber right there between that middle tread. Now, wear indicator here, here's one, here's another one. So they're located all the way around the tire. The wear indicators are so that when the tire wears down and that actually starts hitting the ground as you drive, that means that you have worn your tires down to two thirty seconds of an inch or less. And that's when you need to replace your tires. Like I said, these are getting close. They're not quite there yet. So uh, gonna get a few more miles out of these. Hopefully I can find this leak. That's pretty much all the way around the tread of the tire. And I do not see anything that's stuck in it. That one right there is, it was in there pretty deep. But I don't think that that's a puncture. So the next thing that I'm gonna end up doing trying to find this leak is I'm going to go ahead and air the tire up to about 35, 40 PSI. Now I'm going to use water and I'm going to see if I can find the leak that way.
Okay, so I found it. Found where the slow leak is. See if you can see that. See where the bubbles are coming out? So, let's talk about plugging a tire. And I'm just going to take these gloves off. I've already used soap and water on it. The tire's pretty clean now anyway. Alright, plugging a tire. Uh, they make plug kits that you can get at most of your auto parts stores and they work pretty good. Now, the thing about a plug kit is you can only use them in a certain area of the tire, in the tread area. You do not want to use them close to the shoulder, which is this area right here where it turns and meets the sidewall. So basically about a half an inch or so from the edge of the tire, you do not want to put a plug there. Now, pretty much anywhere in the middle of the tread is acceptable for a plug, and that's this is perfect because it's almost dead center. Another place that you're not going to be able to use a plug is anywhere on a sidewall. If your sidewall is cut, nine times out of ten, that tire is going to need to be replaced. But, like I said, right now we've got a leak in the tread, and I am going to attempt to put a plug in it so you guys get to watch that okay so when you buy a plug kit you're going to get the plugs um, these are uh, some type of, of uh, material uh, a fabric core material and it's covered in tar or a tar like substance so that's your plug you're going to get a file, uh, they might actually call this an awl. And what you do is you stick this down in the hole and you rough up the edges real good. So it gives something for this plug to stick to. And then you have your plug insertion tool. Now, the thing about the plug insertion tool is kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can get it close enough here for you to take a look at it. So, okay, you see it looks like the big, an eye of a needle almost, but the tip of it, and it's hard to see because I've used this one before, the tip of it is actually split. So you put the plug through here, just like you would a piece of thread, all right, or put it through like that, and then you'll stick it down in the tire, down in there, and when you pull it out, the ends of this thing will spread open and allow the plug to stay in the tire. So that's, this is your insertion tool. So. Now that we got all that figured out. And this is really the part where I need my gloves, but you guys already know my gloves kind of gave up on me there. So. I don't know if you can hear that but there's air hissing out around it so all right I've probably got that hole prepped well enough now let's get a plug now you can cut these plugs in half I've done it before that's the last plug I put in this tire. I actually cut it in half. I'm not going to do that this time because here I am plugging the tire again and I don't know if this is the same spot that I plugged before or not but I'm just going to put the whole plug in just like that. Now when we stick it in the tire I want to have a little bit of it sticking or left on the outside of the tire. So. And don't worry about the air coming out when you do this. That's why I have my compressor so that I can get 
so that I can fill the tire up again. All right. So, and I did notice just as I did this that that is the spot where the old plug was. So putting a half of a plug in the last time might not have been such a good idea. But now that we've got that plug in there, we're gonna check it and see if it's leaking. And it don't appear to be. Seems like it's got a good, a good hold on it now. So, now some people will tell you, cut it off even with a tire tread. Now this is what I did last time too, and that might be why the rest of the plug ended up inside the tire. So I'm going to leave it out, and it's just going to kind of wear away um, as, as the rest of the tire wears away. And uh, yeah, you might hear that for the first couple of miles of driving, but it'll wear away pretty quick. So I'm just going to leave that the way it is and uh, gonna call that a tire repair. So now we need to get everything set up to get the tire back on the car. Tell you what, it sure was nice being over there in the shade. Now, you wanna be careful when you do this that you lift the wheel up and put it on and make sure that you don't knock the car off of the jack. Take your lug nuts. Oh, one other thing, and I should have showed this to you while I had the tire off, but take a quick look at your studs that the lug nuts go on and make sure that the threads look like they're in decent shape, not uh, worn out or crossed or anything. And you can take a look inside your lug nuts as well and make sure that they look decent too. Now, put them on finger tight. No need to try and torque them right now. Now another thing, I would have normally scrubbed the tire and the wheel clean while I had it off, but you know what? I ain't too worried about it right now. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna run them down until they're snug. Okay, snug, snug. And I'm using a star pattern. What I mean by that is, since this is five lugs, I wanna do basically, and I'll show you here in just a second. All right, so that's the five of them that are snug. But the star pattern is here, 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 here. So you're basically making a big star. All right, and that's the same pattern I'm gonna use when I'm torquing the lug nuts once I get this thing back down on the ground. So speaking of getting it back down on the ground, let's get it back down on the ground. manual is going to give you torque specifications for the lug nuts. Now, I do not have a torque wrench with me right now, so I'm going to have to torque it later. But what you can do, especially if you're on the side of the road where you don't have a torque wrench, all right, tight, and remember your star pattern.
See this horse fly? All right. So, got the five of them run down. Now, if you're on the side of the road and you're doing this, go ahead and do what I just did. Get them tight. Get everything packed up. Get moving down the road. As soon as you get a chance to pull off the road at an exit, a gas station, something like that, go ahead, pull off the road, and then retorque or recheck these a couple of miles down the road to make sure that they're not loose or that they haven't come loose. So, I'm just going to hit them one more time. And then when I do get access to a torque wrench, I'll go ahead and recheck the torque on these uh, within a day or so. So that's pretty much all there is to changing a tire. So old one off, new one on. I'm gonna bring the air compressor over here and I'll go ahead and put about 36 PSI in this tire, which is what I've got all the others running at. And I'm gonna start the car up and I'm gonna read those and try and balance this tire to all the rest of them. Okay, so not too bad actually. Right now this tire is reading 32. So like I said, I want it pretty close to 36. And that's just a guess. Um, I don't want to over inflate it. But uh, you go check and see what it says here. All right, gonna hit it one more time real quick. I'm at 35 right now. So that right there is probably pretty good. So what I'm showing on my tire pressure indicating system is my two front tires are at 35. The one on the opposite side from here is reading 37. Now those pressures are going to change as you drive the car. The front ones are actually going to increase in pressure a little bit more than the back ones because that's where the main braking is at, that's where the drive, uh, the, the front wheel drive is. So there's more friction on those front tires than the rear tires and as you drive that pressure is going to increase. So I'm not worried about taking those up from 35. 35 is good. That. Let me show you real quick. So hopefully you can see that. 35, 35, 35, and 37. So with that, I'm going to call it done. Uh, if you have any questions about doing a tire change, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Uh, tell me what you think. And uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless. Take care. And remember, pay attention to the details. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and hit the notification button so you know when I'm doing a new video. Like this video and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Also, feel free to share this with any of your social media sites.